cool. Unbelievable. It seems to work. Cool. Unbelievable. Okay, let's start. Let's start this uh, weekly live stream. So welcome everyone. Uh, this live stream uh, from now on I will call your weekly dose of Terraform because uh, I'm going to have it weekly and uh, it will be primarily focused about Terraform, uh, Terraform tools reviews, different opinions, different interviews, different live coding, many different things which uh, um, should be interesting for people who are inside of uh, uh, in, inside of all this Terraform world and infrastructure as code in general. So my name is uh, Anton Babenka. You probably know uh, this already. Uh, uh, please uh, mute your audio if you <laughs> if you can. Uh, if you cannot mute your audio, I can mute you too. Thank you very much. Okay, so. Uh, uh, I'm progressing and improving quality of this stream, so if there are some challenges, uh, that's, uh, that's me. Okay, um, let me uh, introduce the company where I actually work, because not many people know that I actually work. I'm not just uh, having fun with Terraform, but I actually try to do business. So uh, I'm founder of the company called Better Job where we specialize at Terraform and AWS and DevOps and actually do this uh, worldwide. I'm based in Norway, while uh, many other people uh, I cooperate based uh, in different parts of the globe. I'm also AWS community hero and uh, active open source uh, contributor and maintainer uh, to different projects. I'm also interested uh, in serverless and uh, trying to figure out how to use serverless with Terraform properly and what is actually the challenges. So if you are uh, looking for anything related to Terraform consulting, training, workshops, or mentorship, uh, feel free to uh, reach out betterjob.com and uh, we'll see how we can uh, cooperate. So uh, uh, there are a few things which uh, I have actually summarized. And uh, as you probably know that uh, it's hard to do work uh, like alone. I have large, large list of people who are helping me. So big thanks to these individuals who has been sponsoring me uh, for quite a long time. Uh, many of them sponsored me through uh, GitHub sponsorship. Uh, some of them sponsored through different other channels uh, like uh, PayPal or like uh, buy me a coffee because you probably know that I like to drink coffee and coffee in Norway is pretty expensive. So buy me a coffee is pretty good. So. Uh, there are also companies who are appreciating what I'm doing and uh, big, uh, big thanks to them. Cloudcraft uh, has been uh, the oldest and the uh, uh, like most, of it, most efficient uh, sponsor uh, for me since, uh, I don't know, 2018 probably. Uh, so they're doing great uh, uh, AWS diagrams in the browser and uh, M0, uh, which I will talk in a second, and Secret Hub uh, also do a very good job uh, for supporting me. So thanks to them. And I want to uh, actually make an extra big uh, shout out to a sponsor uh, of this stream, uh, M0, because uh, you probably have not heard about it, but it's like new startup, uh, which is uh, uh, very new inside of cloud management. And uh, the uh, goal of this uh, company is to let you provide an easy self-service platform uh, that your entire team can manage all of their environments. Uh, the way how M0 is doing it is uh, they give you a way of uh, spinning up and uh, limiting or uh, setting up different guardrails for your infrastructure templates, which you have already created, right? Well, you probably created them in Terraform and now you are thinking about how to execute them, how to get that infrastructure created. So M0 is doing this and uh, putting lots of different uh, uh, interesting innovations related to governance, security and management, as well as actually tracking 
uh, cost uh, as it uh, goes. So every hour or every few hours, you will be able to see how much your infrastructure costs. And you can do this in a pretty nice UI. So uh, you can give it a try because it's, now it's in public beta. And uh, if you go to M0, uh, if you go to, well, this is how it looks. You can see uh, some real stuff which I have here where I executed something and then I see deployment log, uh, what has happened. If I expand some of these things, uh, I will be able to see where exactly it failed. In this case, it's fail. it fails on plan and so on. So you may think about this like Atlantis, uh, but uh, for enterprises, I would call it like this for now. Uh, yeah, so the link, uh, if you want to give it a try, is nf0.com slash Anton. Please give, give a try to this link and uh, let me know what you think. Okay, another uh, good stuff by uh, M0 is that they uh, have released uh, Terra tag. Now I can talk about this publicly. Cool, so Terra tag is another tool which uh, allows us to uh, manage uh, and maintain tags across all of your Terraform configuration files. Uh, many people I talked to, they wanted to have this kind of tool, but another part of people are thinking that this is stack in the wrong direction. Well, uh, I understand what you mean very clearly, because it's not written in code, but TerraTag is slightly different. It's actually generating Terraform code for you. So in any case, please give a try to this tool and um, uh, let me know what you think. And remember to click start because this is important. Otherwise, um, it just, it's not important. Okay, so the plan for today is uh, the following. Uh, now we will see what has actually happened in the whole Terraform uh, world. Uh, well, maybe whole Terraform world is a little bit uh, too big or too, too, too much to say because uh, it's very... Uh, active community still and a lot of things going on. I just want to mention a couple things here and there. So the first uh, uh, one is uh, uh, please remember to uh, write your questions uh, inside of comments uh, when you go here on uh, YouTube and you just write your comment here, uh, then I will be able to answer them uh, during this stream. If you have questions which you want to uh, bring, let's say, for next time, or maybe you want to plan it for something longer, then uh, please go to uh, uh, or ask them inside of this page. So uh, slide door event and then something. Um, so this way I can plan something for the next uh, time and then we will go through that as well. Uh, Overall, uh, in Terraform community uh, during this week, uh, there were no groundbreaking change or no huge releases which I can uh, tell uh, like immediately. There were traditional releases like uh, Terraform 014 Alpha, couple releases in different providers, but uh, not much to talk about, I think. Uh, we will see how things progress and maybe next week there will be something cool which we can discuss uh, in more details. So another thing which uh, we will have today is actually I will start a new uh, section where I will go through different uh, tools review related to Terraform. And I will start with uh, security tools reviews because security is very hot. A lot of people want to have secure infrastructure. Not many people understand what security actually means for the infrastructure. A lot of companies uh, trying to uh, speculate on this and uh, bring new tools, new different solutions. Uh, so it's pretty interesting uh, area to be. It's not so, uh, uh, so so stable, I would say. So there are certain uh, companies who are trying to come up with very new solutions. Some companies are doing just uh, whatever the rest of them are doing. So I will start with reviewing tools. Uh, today it will be Chekhov. Then next week it will be TF Lint. Then it will be something else like uh, TerraScan, TFSec, uh, OPA, uh, ConfTest, and maybe something else. If you have any opinions uh, which of these two uh, I should review first or second, or mm, you can add some tools which you want to, to be reviewed, please uh, let me know. Uh, there are plenty of ways how you can reach me 
Uh, the best one is you can find me on uh, GitHub and you can also, uh, uh, well, I don't know how to write my last name. So here is my last name. Uh, it's uh, the same handler on Twitter and LinkedIn. So feel free to reach out to me and uh, we can uh, talk about it. Okay, now the interesting part. The interesting part for today is, is going to be uh, before checkoff, of course. It's going to be a review of uh, one, um, one Terraform module. So yesterday, one of uh, um, Terraform uh, AWS uh, modules contributor approached me and say like, hey, is there any way to, uh, to improve this module? Well, I, I looked at it and I thought immediately that yes, there are plenty of things which uh, can be done, but uh, let me uh, bring it to the stream and I can actually uh, go through this uh, a little bit more publicly. And uh, he, uh, he doesn't mind, so thanks for that, uh, Vladimir. Um, so I will uh, now uh, talk about this one and then I will go through uh, uh, Chekhov and then we will have Q&A uh, with Barak, uh, who is creator and uh, founder of um, Bridge Crew, the company behind Chekhov. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll go there. So the first uh, thing about this module, Terraform AWS CloudWatch dashboard is the name of it. As you can imagine by title, uh, it would be cool to have a way to, uh, to describe your CloudWatch dashboards in Terraform and then have them created. So that's exactly the purpose of this module. Uh, if you don't know what is CloudWatch dashboard, think about this as all of your visual, visual data from uh, different sources. It can be represented as uh, different diagrams, as graphs, uh, lists, uh, different uh, font size, different dimensions, positioning, the, so the whole rearrangement uh, features of dashboard. So uh, when I look at this kind of modules, I'm uh, thinking about, uh, is this module designed to be used uh, for more than just a company where Vladimir is working? And uh, I usually assume that yes, it should be as uh, general as possible. So there shouldn't be any hard-coded values uh, like company names or some requirements for, for different things which are not related. So uh, uh, this is pretty good. Uh, I mean, in this regard, uh, this module is doing a pretty good job. Uh, if we look into uh, the source code, uh, you can imagine what is inside of source code, right? So think about this. What kind of source code you would expect to have inside of CloudWatch dashboard module? Well, I would personally imagine not this, okay? If you look into this one, you can see that, hey, there are just local, and then you are outputting JSON map using JSON encode function in Terraform, and that's it. Uh, so the reason why this is enough uh, is that uh, you have already a few inputs, like start, end, period, override, widgets, and then you are encoding this, and then you are outputting this information inside of your CloudWatch dashboard. So this module is actually generating just JSON representation, which uh, CloudWatch dashboard resource is expecting. Well, this is, uh, I would say, good start. But uh, look at this from another point. Uh, is there a something what this module uh, can do uh, what user is struggling with? Or you want to hide from user and let user to think about this slightly differently? Well, the first thing which comes to my mind is that uh, I don't want to even think about this complicated widget structure. I want uh, to have uh, more stuff uh, going on inside of this module uh, by default without me thinking about uh, a lot of these properties metrics. Well, what is it? ECS, memory utilization, service, this and this and this. Well, this is too complicated. So I'm thinking about this as uh, something like, hey, can my users pick up from existing metrics list. And uh, then this module will actually compose these widgets and will put this metrics the way it, it has to be. So for example, I'm thinking about uh, map of, uh, uh, map of uh, any, where key is some uh, easy, understand, um, uh, easy, easy to understand and easy to work with 
for example, uh, you can think about all combinations of uh, service, namespace, and uh, uh, what is it, memory utilization, metric, metric name probably. Uh, and then let your users to not uh, provide this list of things because it, it requires uh, thinking. And the module supposed to hide all of this for user. While at the same time, this module should allow users to uh, be as explicit as they want. So this module has to do two things. If you are a user who don't really care about how things are going to be uh, are going to be uh, implemented, uh, then you should be able to just provide. Uh, uh, values uh, with some keywords and then module will go through them and uh, uh, expand them the way they want. Well, what can possibly go wrong if my daughter called me during live stream? Well, let's see. Привет. Тая, у меня сейчас live stream. Давай попозже поговорим. Позвони маме. Пока. Yeah. Nice and urgent. So uh, the thing is that uh, uh, when you're designing these modules, uh, try to think about uh, what is absolutely must have information, like absolutely must have. And uh, then try to eliminate everything what is not relevant. So x equal zero, well, that's not uh, necessary. Y equals zero, that's not, uh, not necessary. Let it flow by default as one after another. So then you can think about x is uh, incrementally Okay, so these two we can easily skip. Type equal metric. Well, probably metric is by default anyway, so let it fall back to metric if it's not specified. The same with uh, properties. Well, properties uh, can be some different types of... Uh, so this is different types of uh, map. And uh, I would like to just specify that, hey, I'm gonna to visualize metric for memory utilization of this cluster. Or, or of this service inside of this cluster. That's all. Let it generate the rest of this uh, by default. Because uh, there are very few combinations how you can do this. I mean, you can do this correctly or you can do this incorrectly. And usually correct way is the best one and should be the easiest one which comes by default. Uh, then if I'm looking at this module and I think like, okay, well, th th this means that uh, there has to be a lot of thinking going on through these different possibilities inside of metrics or inside of other uh, arguments. Well, and that's the whole purpose of how much time do you actually have to work on this module? If this would be, let's say, Terraform AWS modules, which we host on uh, GitHub in, uh, in the organization, Terraform AWS modules, then this module wouldn't be accepted because it's too specific. It, it, it does not give user enough flexibility as for example, uh, with uh, security group module. Security group module, uh, I recently discovered was one of the most uh, appreciated by people within uh, HashiCorp uh, because there are a lot of sub modules. And if you don't want to, to, let's say, understand how things work, you can just say that, hey, I want to create uh, security group which is sufficient for HTTP uh, port 80. Well, that's it. So then you're calling this submodule uh, by referencing specific submodule, and then it will uh, uh, use some hard coded values which are specified here, which will understand that okay, actually, this port should be open. So you hide a lot of this magic inside of the module and let it be there. And your end users will not have to understand what's going on. They are just saying like, hey, give me this security group of this HTTP 80 port open. That's it. Of course, there are a lot of other options which are optional, but by default, uh, it's, it will create just HTTP 80. So uh, uh, summarizing this one, I want to say that uh, when you are uh, looking at module and you think that uh, this module is missing, because honestly, I believe that this module is missing. I couldn't find anything on GitHub, on the registry, but I believe that there are uh, similar type of modules developed uh, inside of uh, different organizations uh, with, uh, with uh, the goal of creating CloudWatch dashboards, but uh, limit to company-wide uh, use cases, for example. 
So if you want to do this just for your company, fine. You don't have to spend any more energy and this is a good example. It, it's going to work, that's fine. But if you're going to do this for a uh, wider community or if you want to play with uh, different uh, features of Terraform and uh, see how challenging it can be to generate JSON from different structures in Terraform so that um, they actually treat it correctly within uh, AWS CloudWatch, then it's great exercise. So I think uh, this is uh, uh, just an example of how things can be done. And if I go to uh, examples, again, I, I should see some readme, but even if I don't see readme, I see that there are some examples, something is created. And uh, I, I can at least understand how this module was designed to be used. That's good, but uh, if you have more time, then uh, feel free to uh, expand it and make it make it more complete by uh, hiding a lot of this inside of module and let users to just say, hey, I need CloudWatch dashboard for this ECS service. That's it. Or I need a uh, dashboard uh, which consists of ECS service, this one, and ALB um, request count per target. That's it. Let this be uh, somewhere uh, inside of the module. So if you, if you have any other Terraform examples which you want to go through, please uh, send them to me and uh, uh, I will try to review them. Hopefully this example was uh, somewhat helpful uh, to people. So uh, if so, then let's continue. Okay. Mm. Okay, so, uh, well, there are a few questions or not questions, but somebody say that they love me and that's good. I love you too. Um, okay, so now the thing is, uh, uh, we are 22 minutes uh, <laughs> through the stream. Uh, now, I think it's time to go to the main topic. Okay, the main topic for today is going to be Chekhov. Raise your hand if you know what is Chekhov. Okay, cool. I see no one raised hands. Well, you should know what is Chekhov. Okay, so um, I will just uh, share one link. I had difficulties with uh, streaming software. No, well, this is typical, right? So. Uh, you can join this uh, Zoom call now and uh, this is the place where uh, you will be able to talk to, uh, um, talk to, well, what is it? Well, I like this recursion so much. Uh, where you can talk to Barak uh, in, in a second. Barak is a creator of Chekhov. Uh, first of all, let me explain what is Chekhov. Okay, so there are more people uh, saying yeah, that uh, this is Anton Chekhov and this is absolutely true. If I go to uh, Google and then I write Chekhov, well, there are no Chekhov and no mention about Terraform, nothing. So that's a little bit tricky name. So you need to know what to write. You can write, well, not Chekhov Star Trek, but Chekhov and then Terraform. Uh, this is one option to do this. Or you can write Chekhov GitHub to find correct Chekhov, which you need. So, um, what is Chekhov? Chekhov is, uh, uh, as, I, as I'm thinking about this, is a static code analysis tool for infrastructure as code tool with focus on security. And uh, with focus on security is kind of important here. It's not like general thing, while it can be general, but they focus on security. I will explain this a little bit uh, more uh, later. And Chekhov allows uh, us to think about this as imperative way to write policies. So policies are written in uh, Python. They are somewhere here. Everything in Chekhov is open source. And uh, from user perspective, you can actually see what's going on. You can check out this project. You can see uh, the history of it. You can see that, oh my God, there are more than 400 built-in policies. That's pretty cool, you may think. And then you see words like Kubernetes, GCP, Azure, CloudFormation, uh, serverless framework. Well, so actually everything. Okay, that sounds uh, good uh, for AWS uh, at all. For, no, not for AWS, for Terraform. I think there are 200 something policies. 
which is more than half, which is pretty good. So Terraform is our main focus here, okay? So what it uh, means, I'm not going to go through this documentation because I think it just uh, self-explain you. You all can go to documentation and as someone gave me feedback of, about my previous stream is that, uh, well, we can look documentation ourselves. I appreciate this feedback very much. So I'm going to show you code. I'm not going to show you documentation as you asked. Here we are. So uh, TF those samples. This is folder where I have my uh, Terraform configuration. And uh, let's start with very simple one. Okay, so I have security group. Okay, cool. I'm going to make a security group. And uh, as you probably uh, think, this is a little bit strange code. Well, this is not strange code because I can actually execute it. I can run Terraform in it. It will download something. I, I run it already. Then I can run plan and it will actually create it. The flow here is that uh, normally what we do, we run init, we run plan, we run apply, and then we run plan, apply, plan, apply, and then eventually destroy or uh, we go to another project. So uh, here what we can do is that we can run init and uh, then we can run something like checkoff. Checkoff minus D. Well, if you are first time, then you can run checkoff minus help and uh, then Python would execute and Python would tell you that infrastructure as code static analysis tool. Cool, many different options. Uh, I, I always go through them and uh, then without uh, reading too much details, I'm just going to run check of, check of something. Well, check of something says like, oh, I need some arguments. Okay, check of minus D dot. Thank you, uh, Punta switcher to change from D to V. Um, but uh, if I run minus D and dot, so this means that now check off, uh, process this configuration file, which is inside of this folder, this minus D, and uh, it try to uh, see if I violate some uh, policies. There are a lot of different uh, uh, policies uh, which are built in. I can optionally disable them uh, or I can write my own policies if I want. The thing is that uh, it says post and what exactly post. Cool. So I didn't ensure that I open uh, port 22 uh, for everyone. That's a good sign. Well, but what if I want to? I will show you uh, if I want to. Then uh, it says ensure every security group rule has a description. Well, I don't see any description here. Do you? Well, I don't. So let me start with writing description something. Um, because uh, here it says that ensure every security group has a description and it passed. This means that uh, Chekhov thought that I already provided this, but I didn't provide it. Okay, so then I thought like, okay, maybe there is an error. So I, I looked into uh, uh, this one and I start writing something like uh, my description. I can also write null if I want. I can also write var dot something if I want. But uh, for, or I can also violate this description and write it more than 255 characters, right? So what if I write something very long? Imagine that me doing this stuff for the first time, I have no clue what I'm doing. So that's why this is cool stuff with a lot of bam, bam. And uh, I run this stuff and it says like, ensure every security group has a description. Well, yes, now it's, it's there and it is, uh, 1400 characters, so it is more than 255 characters. Uh, it gave me first uh, impression that, hey, this rule is not executing. So I think like, mm, yeah, probably it's not executing. So let's move on. I remove this description and I kind of think that, okay, this rule is probably uh, enabled by default, but probably this rule is not tested enough. Well, for that one, I need to look into source code of this rule and figure out how this is actually written, why it's executing, why it's not working the way it's expected. Uh, nevertheless, uh, let's move on. Uh, so then I go to another, uh, like more real example, and I want to create security group where everything is open for everyone. Again, I run this minus D dot, and now it says failed because now, uh, port 22 is actually open uh, for this, um, like for everyone. Well, that's too bad. 
but I have no clue what I'm doing. So I can click on this link, which is really helpful in some places. Uh, but uh, it's not really helpful that much for me because I have no clue what is JavaScript and why I'm seeing this. Uh, I would really prefer to see uh, my code to be corrected for me. Uh, so like Cheka already know where I violated this stuff. So please propose it, uh, how this can be fixed. And uh, I know that this is doable and there is, uh, mm, there is a paid offering which is provided by uh, Chekhov creators where they can make pull requests for you uh, to correct this uh, misconfiguration. So which is pretty cool. So you, even if you don't understand what, what is actually the problem, reading this information will give you some, uh, some information about like, oh, okay, that, so that's description. Ah, so that's actually the problem. Uh, why it is not recommended. So I understand now. Then when I see some pieces of JavaScript like this, it's my, oh my God, I have no clue why I'm here doing this stuff. It's too complicated. So I scroll below and then again, JavaScript. Well, it's not related to Terraform in first place. Uh, I wish it to be related to Terraform much more. And this is uh, not hardest part to do. Anyway, let's move on. So the first uh, thing was like easy. We specify something, then we can correct it to, uh, to let's say, to specify more precise cylinder blocks. If I can do this, I just specify, let's say from 10 to, uh, now it's more precise. Mm, so now everything is passing. That's, that's pretty cool. So I'm happy now. Now let's uh, remove these comments or comment these lines and let's move on a little bit uh, uh, like deeper. And now we are gonna to, let's say, spin up instance. As you can see, I'm trying to spin up AMI1234, which is uh, not valid because it's just incorrect. And uh, I'm from the future. I want to use instance of t-type t10.huge. And uh, again, this kind of information is not for Chekhov. That's important to understand. The Chekhov is doing uh, things related to the security in first place, while it can do a little bit more, to my opinion. Uh, so these kind of verifications are not for Chekhov. Uh, what it means is that if I run this code now, and uh, it would tell me that uh, uh, it would tell me something, and this is where my uh, like biggest challenge started. It's like ensure instance metadata version one is not enabled. Okay, uh, well, there is no link to that one. So I have no clue where to go. Well, I go to official documentation and read about uh, what is this AWS resource doing? What is metadata option? Ah, okay, so instead of enabled, I should provide disabled. Cool, so that's what I did. I specify disabled. Now I run this checkoff and I see that uh, this thing is now fixed. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted. But if at some point you want to, uh, to tell um, Chekhov to just ignore this change, you can always add this annotation and you can specify uh, Chekhov skip and skip which exactly rule you want to skip and what should be the reason for this. So now if I run this and if I specify not disabled by enable, because we are not, we are not secure enough. Okay, so I don't care about this now and I specify uh, enabled and then I run it, it says skipped for this resource because we like unsecure. Cool. So that's pretty much what, what you can do. By default, Chekhov will verify uh, what it can do and you can control it, you can enable a lot of things, you can disable a lot of uh, Chekhov, uh, Chekhov rules uh, by specifying them, skip check and provide list of these uh, things which you don't care about. So it's pretty flexible here. Additionally, there are a lot of ways of uh, outputting this information, uh, which gives you possibility to embed this information inside of your uh, CI CD tool uh, or different, um, uh, different output formats like JUnit, JSON, GitHub failed only. Uh, which uh, which I guess is suitable if you're writing a check off uh, in uh, GitHub Action, for example. So there are plenty of ways to do this. Uh, now let's uh, look into a little bit uh, 
even more realistic example okay what do we do so first of all we specify a variable HTTP endpoint well you put something here who use uh, um, Terraform TFRs files or any TFRs files I guess pretty much everyone right so you put something in uh, TFRs file you edit this only file somewhere and maybe this is the only file which is different between your environments so here it's not going to be picked up what it means is that uh, you are writing your terraform configuration and you specify default values but you also specify terraform tfrs which will be loaded automatically right uh, at least that's your assumption so if i specified enabled here and then disabled inside of uh, terraform uh, tfrs the value which is inside of Terraform TFRs will be uh, used. But in fact, uh, Chekhov will not read and will not process Terraform TFRs. Uh, well, uh, this is kind of a big surprise for me because uh, I assume the tool uh, stay on top of my existing flow and understand that uh, Terraform has this possibility to, uh, to let's say, uh, to, to use uh, Terraform TFRs files, these files will be automatically loaded. So I assume the checkoff will do the same and will just process this file uh, and will respect values which are specified there. Technically, it's rather easier to do because uh, Terraform TFRs contain only static information and it does not contain any uh, interpolation or functions inside of it so which means that it should be easy to to expand uh, i know that uh, guys are working on that and uh, maybe it's a low priority for them because that's not how how they uh, uh, see people using terraform but to my opinion hard code something here or inside a variable is uh, like first level how you start using your terraform then you put it inside of your terraform tfrs and then you figure out that, oh, you have secrets, then you put them in, into your uh, TFR environment variables. And then you figure out that uh, you actually can generate uh, a TF JSON file programmatically. Uh, well, none of these options will not be picked up by uh, Chekhov by default. Only what you specified here and what you specified in default will be respected. Uh, yeah, that's that's one thing which is um, which is pretty uh, important, I would say. When I run this kind of tool, I really like when tool tell me what it did or what kind of files it processed. So for Chekhov, it's pretty cool that they are doing. I will disable this check now, and if I run this now, um, well, no, it, it doesn't show, but uh, sometimes. Uh, it shows like somewhere here uh, where this variable is coming from uh, so it can say how this var.http endpoint was uh, uh, extracted or how it was fetched so this sometimes give, give me some information about uh, what's going on and how uh, Chekhov is doing uh, or resolving this value uh, Occasionally, there are some situations which I have no clue why they even uh, appear. Like ensure all data stores in launch configuration EBS is, sec is securely encrypted. Well, I don't see any uh, launch configuration EBS at all here. Where they are, I don't know. So occasionally, there are uh, things which are not related to the error itself which means that I have to run checkoff and then I have to disable something what uh, is not relevant. I think this is uh, uh, like traditional problems of uh, open source projects which are constantly developing. I, I know how things are from developer's point of view. So you start making something and then bugs and features, bugs and features, and whoever can cure uh, each one, then they win. So bug or feature, you never know. And the same happens here. Uh, if you see something like this, please open pull request uh, or uh, open an issue, and I'm sure that developers will take a look on this. Um, okay, a uh, few other things. Uh, 
uh, which are related to, to the flow, which I want to highlight. So despite the fact that Chekhov is the refined values and uh, it does it, it has lots of rules, it's uh, producing relevant output, which is uh, usually easy to understand and easy to follow and you, you can easily understand uh, what exactly was the reason, which is really great. Uh, you need to understand that uh, Chekhov is not the only tool which you have to put in your pipeline and it's actually not the first tool, which, in my opinion, has to be in your pipeline uh, at all. So the first one, which uh, is, uh, which is uh, like relevant, is that will this even compile? Okay. So if I now run check of minus D, and uh, well, nothing. Hmm. Okay. Is it good? Is it bad? Let's see. Well, it's good. Well, no, it's bad because it's this one. So for uh, for this kind of situation, uh, what what you still need to do is that you need to write validate. So Terraform validate will actually verify that syntax is correct and it will complain because wow, that's that's exactly what I want. So yes, that's uh, that's what I want. I want to see that okay, code is not valid, so definitely there is no point to run any other tool. So first you run uh, Terraform validate, and second one is like, uh, are we even talking about issues uh, or about values which make sense? Like T2 huge, is it a good one? Well, uh, probably not. Maybe it will be released in 20 years, but right now there is no T2, T10 dot huge. So I want uh, Terraform code to be reviewed. And that's where uh, other tools like, uh, uh, TFLint are uh, are doing a good job, while uh, Chekhov is focusing on next phase. Chekhov is actually f verifying things related to the security in first place. While uh, technically I don't see the reason why Chekhov cannot do uh, this validation as well. Uh, maybe we can ask uh, Borak uh, about this uh, in Q&A. Uh, as a reminder, uh, Please join a Zoom call uh, right now, and uh, we will go there in uh, in few minutes. I'm almost done with uh, uh, my review of uh, Chekhov, um, like for at least uh, for the time being. Uh, but before that, let me go. Wait, where is it? Yes. Uh, l let me like summarize uh, my overall uh, vision of Chekhov. Uh, Chekhov, as well as uh, 10 other tools in this field, are essential part uh, of most of pipelines. What I think is that uh, Chekhov is doing a good job focusing on security, while it can do even better job by picking low-hanging fruits like uh, uh, TFLint is doing. I'm not saying that TFLint is a bad project or it has to be decommissioned in any way because Chekhov is superior. Absolutely not. They are doing very similar job, but uh, from slightly different angles. So Chekhov is written in Python, another one is written in Go. It depends uh, where you are coming from. You may prefer one language over another. Uh, I'm not uh, a fan of uh, language uh, language debates uh, and say like this can be done in Python easier, better, faster, and so on. Uh, the same with any other language or tool comparison. I only review them by what they actually do. If I can do this in one tool efficiently, faster, without uh, less headache, without less magic, uh, it's great. When I was using Chekhov uh, uh, like, uh, for, for this preparation and uh, before, I looked at this as a uh, uh, well, Chekhov gives you tips like what can be done or uh, take a look on this improvement, or maybe this is uh, wrong. I'm never able to trust like 100% of whatever Chekhov says is absolutely true. I use it as one of uh, several tools uh, which I respect equally. And if one tool said that uh, there are 10 violations of different rules and uh, TFLint says that there are 15 violations of this rule, for me this means that, okay, 25 issues has to be reviewed with exactly the same amount of uh, meticulously. 
So I'm not able to say that uh, this tool is better or uh, not. Uh, in uh, uh, in uh, real life, uh, what I what I was showing here is that we are not writing resources so much, or at least I'm not advocating to write resources so much. I'm advocating to use building blocks. Okay, so module, VPC and then source, and then you know what to write. So here is how we write uh, something. Okay, so this is a building block, which expects a lot of uh, inputs to be sent. Okay, so now um, if I run checkup, you can imagine what will happen, right? It will just say that Okay, check off here is it. Mm, right. So it will just ignore that there is any module block here. And you may think like, oh yeah, cool, my code is now perfectly fine. Well, I would really appreciate if Chekhov could honestly tell me that, hey, I was trying to process these files in this directory and uh, I was able to understand uh, that HTTP endpoint was hard coded through default, but I ignored uh, tfjson file, tfvars file, module blocks, pretty much everything what we use on uh, any uh, production load or any kind of uh, uh, infrastructure which we want to work with, right? So our infrastructure is usually consists of module, 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 and they're somehow interconnected, passing values between themselves and so on. That's the whole point of Terraform. While uh, I totally understand people who are coming from, uh, you know, like, who are new to Terraform, they go to registry documentation, they read about different resources, and then they're uh, thinking about, oh, let's, let's make this awesome uh, building block, and uh, they use just the resources. But uh, how, uh, like, mm, like uh, highly scalable or uh, well-designed infrastructures are not consistent of resources in first place. And if you disagree with me, uh, please uh, tell me uh, that uh, I'm wrong. But my, my vision is uh, that we have to use much, much more uh, existing solutions. Right now, there are 4,000 modules in the registry. Why on earth you need to write resource for... Uh, I don't know, for what else? For VPC, for ACM, for ALB, for, for, for what else you need to write? For API Gateway, for, for anything else, uh, you don't need to do that. Um, yeah, but uh, I don't want to sound like I'm, uh, um, I'm uh, how to say, disappointed or I'm saying something bad about different tools. Well, this is first tool which I'm reviewing. <laughs> Believe me, there will be more uh, things. Uh, uh, Chekhov is definitely not uh, the worst one or not uh, the best one. For me, as I said, all of these tools are in very good shape of uh, trying uh, fixing bugs, uh, trying different approaches and so on. Uh, so we will have to do this uh, continuously until there is one tool which does uh, let's say 90% of things. Currently, all of these tools are doing uh, different things uh, pretty much equally, I would say. If we have four tools, then they are doing, let's say, overall like 50%, not 100%. Okay, so from my side, this was pretty much it. Now I want to, to see what you guys have in, well, is there is, yeah, cool. Okay, now I can see that uh, uh, there is there is chat. There are seventeen people watching. Cool. Again, no one uh, dislike it. Well, we'll see. Now we switch to Zoom. Um, so please uh, click that link uh, which I shared uh, and send send your questions there. Well, yeah. Um, so there are no other questions uh, other than Zoom. So we we have to go there, and uh, I will 
I have difficulties with OBS again, so probably there will be no sound now. Uh, but uh, let's try to see. Let's unmute everyone. Now the party will begin. Allow participants to unmute themselves. Cool. So please unmute yourself and uh, uh, say whatever you feel. Cool. Now, yeah. Varak, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hi, everybody. Cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> and yeah, we have four people here in Zoom. Uh, I think I can close uh, YouTube stream for now and we go to Zoom. That part in Zoom will be recorded as well. Uh, so uh, thanks everyone for attending this. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, for attending this one in uh, YouTube and uh, need notification in Telegram chats. Well, uh, I'm not using Telegram so much. Sorry, Rostislav. But if you want uh, to promote it in Telegram, uh, you are more than welcome. Okay, cool. So I will just click stop for this stream and I will start recording inside of another tool.